I'm Walt and this is Delta Astrophotography. My favorite part about this past winter has been that one hour where it didn't rain. Yeah, on these rainy winters, it's best to just practice on your processing. And that's what we're gonna do. It's gonna be a kind of a fun week. I'm going to process an image of the Rosette Nebula in Photoshop for you today. And hopefully you'll follow along and learn with me. And then in a few more days, I'll take the exact same image and I'll process it in PixInsight in a kind of simple and fun way so you won't find PixInsight so intimidating. But for today, we're just gonna stick with Photoshop. Now I will be using some of Russell Crowman's plugins in Photoshop. They, they are not free, but don't worry, I'm not gonna leave you hanging. For every Russell Crowman plugin I use, I'll show you a free alternative. I'll be providing a link to the TIFF file I'm processing in the description below so you can process along with me. And for those of you who are wondering how I captured the data, it was captured with a Canon T5i that was Astro modified, a Radian 61 telescope, an EQ6R Pro mount, and I was auto guiding. I was getting 180 seconds at ISO 800 and I took about 100 of those photos and I stacked them in Deep Sky Stacker. All right, well, that's enough talk. Let's go ahead and jump into Photoshop and get to processing the Rosette Nebula. Okay, we've got the Rosette Nebula photo opened up in Photoshop. As you can see, it's pretty dark, so we're gonna have to stretch it out. And let's start by duplicating the background layer here. I'm gonna right click this layer and I can hit Duplicate Layer. I can also do that by hitting Control or Command J. Okay, so let's start stretching. First, I'm gonna bring up Levels and do a Levels Adjustment. We can bring up Levels by going to Image, Adjustments, Levels, or we can hit Control or Command L. And we can see our data is all the way over here on the left side. So let's take this middle slider right here and drag it over to the data. There we go, I'm gonna hit OK. Now let's do a Curves Adjustment. We can bring up curves by going up to the top and image adjustments, curves, or we can hit control M or command M on the keyboard. We can see the data is right here. I'm going to hover my mouse over it, click and drag up. Make sure that your curve line is not hitting the ceiling and straightening out because that's clipping data that you don't get back. So that looks good right there. I'm going to hit OK. Now we don't want our background sky being too bright, so let's darken that. I'm going to bring up levels again. Control or Command L. And I'm just gonna drag the shadows over here towards the data. I don't wanna drag it past the data because that's clipping and we don't wanna clip anything. We don't get that information back. So about right here, it's gonna be fine for now. I'm gonna hit OK. Let's do another curve stretch. Control or Command M. Do the same thing we did earlier. Just give it a little stretch. And hit OK and once again, I wanna darken the background sky, but also it's starting to look a little green in the background. So I wanna balance out our red, green, and blue channels. So in order for me to do that, I wanna make sure my histogram is open and I can see the three channels in there. Now I'm gonna open levels, control L, and instead of just dragging this over to the data like we did last time, we're gonna go up here to channel and first we're gonna to go to the red channel. Now I'm gonna drag this over. If you uh, look at the top, you can see the red moving in your histogram. See that? All right, so I'm just gonna drag this almost all the way up to the data there. And then now I'm gonna repeat that with green. And I want the green channel to align perfectly with the red. So let's drag this green up. See the green channel moving over there? Let's line it up with the red channel. There we go. And we'll do the same thing with blue. Pay attention to the blue over here. When I start moving this, we wanna line it up right with the red and green. And there we go. I'm gonna hit OK. Now we have a nice neutral dark background and our image is good and stretched. Let's go ahead and make a new layer here. I'm gonna do that by hitting Control, Alt, Shift, and E. Command, Option, Shift, and E on a Mac. There we go. Let's zoom in and see how much noise we're working with here. As you can see, it's pretty noisy. I mean, it could be a lot noisier, honestly. This is a, this is a, a pretty good set of data here. But let's go ahead and reduce some of that noise. I'm gonna be using the RC Astro plugin Noise Exterminator. It is a paid plugin. And I will link it in the description below. But if you do not have that, if, if you uh, 
don't feel like paying the money for that right now, you can always just go to filter, camera raw filter. Let's zoom in a bit here. And come down to our detail tab and bring up noise reduction, color noise reduction and noise reduction. And it cleans it right up. But just be aware that when you use this noise reduction, it is going to take away some of the sharp detail in your image. So you don't really want to go too crazy with it. Your image will start looking very soft. Since I'm using noise exterminator here, I'm going to go ahead and hit cancel. Now let's try noise exterminator out. We're going to go to filter, RC Astro, noise exterminator. I always leave detail right where it is at the default. And for denoise, somewhere between 70 and 75% is good for me. And I'm going to hit OK. All right, noise exterminator has finished. Let's zoom in. There is no noise, not even in the dark areas. On the nebula, I can zoom in all the way to pixel level and not really see any noise. I absolutely love this program. It even preserves the sharpness of the image. Okay, at this point, I want to remove the stars and work on the stars and nebula separately. Now, normally I use Star Exterminator, which is another RC Astro plugin that you have to pay for. If you do not have that plugin and don't feel like purchasing it, I understand. So I'll show you how to do it for free with StarNet version 2. First thing we're going to do is create a new layer. Control Alt Shift and E. And I'm going to call this layer Stars Only. Now let's go ahead and save a copy of this. File, save a copy. All right, we're gonna save this as a TIFF file. We do not wanna save the layers. I'm gonna check this. And I'm just gonna call this for StarNet and hit save. Now I'm not really sure how StarNet works on a Mac. I apologize, but on a PC, you're gonna have a folder on your computer with StarNet inside of it. This is what the contents of that folder is going to look like, and we're going to open up StarNet GUI. For the input file, we're going to browse to the file that we just saved for StarNet. There it is. I'm going to open that, and for output, we'll just add on to the name. Instead of for StarNet, it's now going to be called for StarNet Starless. And we're just going to hit run. Depending on the speed of your computer, this could take anywhere from 3 to 15 minutes. All right, StarNet has completed. I'm going to go ahead and close out of this. Close out of our StarNet folder. And in Photoshop, we're going to go to File, Open, go to that folder where we saved our 4 StarNet image, and now we have a 4 StarNet Starless image. I'm going to open this. There's our Starless image right there. We're going to select it by hitting Control or Command A, and then copy it, Control or Command C. Go back to our workflow we were doing earlier and paste it in. Control V. I'm going to double click this layer and name it Starless. Okay, now we're going to back up for a second and I'm going to show you how to do the exact same process with Star Exterminator. I'm just going to go ahead and delete the Starless image for now. So if we're doing this with Star Exterminator, we've gotten to the point where we have named this layer Stars Only. Now let's duplicate that layer. Control Alt Shift and E, and I'm going to go to Filter, RC Astro, Star Exterminator, and I'm just going to hit OK. And Star Exterminator has now completed. I'm going to go ahead and double click this layer and call it Starless. Now, whether you use StarNet or Star Exterminator, now you should have a Starless layer on top and below it an image called stars only, but it's not actually stars only yet. So we're going to make a stars only image. Now let's go ahead and turn off the starless layer and click on our stars only layer. Now let's go up to image, apply image and under layer here, we're going to select starless and under blending, we're going to select subtract offset somewhere between two and 10 is fine. Let's try two. I'm going to hit okay. First thing you might notice is the stars around where the nebula was are this teal color. And just don't panic about that. When we recombine the stars only image with our nebula, the colors are going to go back to normal. 
While we're looking at our stars only image, let's go ahead and shrink some of these stars down so they won't be dominating the image so much. I'm gonna go up to select, color range, and I'm gonna choose highlights in this drop down box up top. I'm gonna to turn my fuzziness up and the range down to make sure a bunch of stars are selected. I'm gonna hit okay. Now there are marching ants all over our stars, but some of the stars I don't want to shrink too much. I think they really add a lot to the image. So I'm going to select my lasso tool here, and I'm going to hold down the Alt key and draw a circle around any stars I don't want to shrink. That's probably the Option key on a Mac, but uh, don't hold me to that. I could spend a lot more time picking out my favorite stars to not really shrink, but just for this tutorial, we're gonna stop here. All right, let's zoom in and take a look. We are gonna expand this selection so that the entire star is selected, not just kind of the bright core. We want a little area outside of the selection selected as well. <laughs> okay, I'm gonna go back to select, modify, expand. Expand by two pixels. There we go. And select, modify, feather. And we're gonna feather it by one. I've got the zoom tool selected here. I'm gonna click back on fit screen so we can see the entire image. Whew, that's a lot of marching ants. Okay, now we're gonna go up to filter, other, minimum. We're gonna make sure preserve roundness is selected instead of squareness. And we can see in this little preview what this is going to be doing to the stars. And I don't want to go too crazy. It, it might look pretty bad if we pull it up too high. You'll see this like star artifacts back there. So we're just going to go about one pixel, maybe a little, little more, and hit OK. Now let's get rid of all these marching ants by hitting Control or Command D. And there we go. Okay, we have our stars only image with shrunken stars. Now let's get back to working on the starless image. Turn that back on and make sure that layer is selected. I'm just gonna go ahead and duplicate it. Control, Alt, Shift, and E. I'm gonna bring up levels again. Control, L. And I'm just gonna darken that background just a little bit more. There we go. Now if you see any green in the, what's supposed to be the pretty much black background, you could probably get rid of that using a free plugin called Hasta La Vista Green. There'll be a link to that in the description below. Once you have it installed, you can just go to Filter, Deep Sky Colors, Hasta La Vista Green, and just select Medium, hit OK. Looks like there wasn't really much green in this image, so it didn't really do anything. Now I'm gonna show you how to just select the nebula, and we can make a, some sharpening or maybe some vibrance adjustments just to the nebula. I do this because I don't want it to affect the background any. I want to leave the background alone. So we're going to go to Select, Color Range, and it's still on highlights from when we did our stars earlier, but it's too much. So we're going to turn this range back down a little bit. There we go. Okay, I'm going to hit OK. And we're going to refine the selection by going to Select, Select and Mask. And I can still see some of the background sky is selected here, so we're just going to increase the contrast to where the background is pretty black. There we go. And we're going to feather it, make it good and blurry. I'm going to hit OK. Now I'm going to come down here to this button, add new layer mask, and I'm going to select that. It's created a layer mask, and I'm going to click back on our actual image here instead of the layer mask. And now whatever adjustments we make, it will only affect what is selected, which is our nebula. So let's go up to filter, camera raw filter. And on our basic tab, we can bump up the clarity a little bit, help bring out some of the detail. That looks really nice. Let's zoom in a bit. Let's see what that clarity did. I'm turn it back down, turn it back up. Yep, looks really good. Just don't go overboard with it. I don't know, that still kind of looks cool, actually. <laughs> All right, that looks good to me, and we're just gonna turn the vibrance up a touch. It's already pretty vivid red. We don't need to 
turn that up too much more. Okay, I'm gonna click okay. Let's look at before and after. Nice. All right, let's create a new layer. Control, Alt, Shift, and E. Command, Option, Shift, and E on a Mac. Just zoom in a touch more. What I'm gonna do right now is I'm just gonna bring out some more detail. These little veiny looking dark areas. I'm gonna make those pop a little bit by using the burn tool. It's gonna to be right here. Sometimes it might be set to the dodge tool. We're just gonna right click that and go to burn. Under range, make sure shadows is selected and exposure is about 8%. We can change our brush size with the bracket keys on our keyboard or coming up here and changing the brush size from here. I prefer using the bracket keys. All right, so I'm just gonna kind of click on some of these darker areas to make them even darker. That's what the burn tool does. Don't go too crazy with it, but it really helps some of these darker areas pop. All right, that's all the burning I'm gonna do. Click back on my zoom tool here and click fit screen. And I'm gonna create a new layer, control, alt, shift, and E. Guys, there's really not a whole lot more I wanna do to this image. I'm actually pretty happy with it. So I'm gonna go find my stars only layer and I'm gonna drag it to the very top. Now where it says normal, I'm gonna click this and for blending mode, we're gonna select linear dodge add. A lot of people choose screen when they do this, but as you can see when I chose screen, those center stars kind of look funny and they've got a little bit of that teal or greenish color in there. So that's why we're gonna go linear dodge add. Zoom back out. And there's our image and I think that's looking pretty good. I'm gonna create a new layer, control alt shift and E. And the only thing I'm gonna do is maybe bring up levels, control L. I'm gonna darken that background sky just a touch more. Maybe one more final round of noise reduction. You can do it in camera raw filter, but I'm gonna go to filter, RC Astro, noise exterminator, and turn the noise, denoise down a bit more and hit okay. Let's zoom in and that looks very, very clean. Let's zoom back out by clicking fit screen. There's one thing that I forgot to do I should have done at the very beginning. I'm gonna go ahead and close out of the histogram. Normally at the very beginning, I like to crop just a little bit because they can be some stacking artifacts maybe on the sides of your photo. So you don't want those in there. Just kind of crop those out a little bit. There, I think that's good enough. And that is our final image. Okay, I guess that about wraps things up. I always tell people when they watch my processing tutorials, you don't have to follow it step by step. I just wanna show you some techniques that I use and I hope you can learn something new so you can solve problems and know how to fix certain situations when they appear. I'm really excited about the PixInsight tutorial on the same image that I'm gonna do this week. So if you're not subscribed and you're interested in that kind of stuff, please subscribe. It's gonna be, it's, it's gonna be a pretty easy tutorial, I think. And uh, if you liked the video, give me a like, and uh, I really can't wait to see you again soon. So as always, stay spacey, clear skies. Good night.